Alright, so I've been at... I'm trying to film a video here, man. I'm so sorry. We just gotta get these lights done. Uh, no, no, I'm just kidding. Alright, so we've been, we've been over here at the Twin Cities Isle Show for eight days now. Mostly 11 days. Or, <laughs> 11 hours a day I'm I'm pretty tired so I'm, I'm ready to go home but um, so here's kind of my general thing with being here is you know a lot of people don't see these cars online so it's been cool to like sit here and answer questions and explain the Zimmer history the Excalibur history um, and pretty much everything I know about these cars which is a lot by this point to the point where my voice starts going out so none of the spare tires are actually functional including the ones on the back um, these are Zimmer Mustangs, which means Zimmer took a brand new Mustang, cut the front end off, extend the frame by three feet, with, uh, and did six to eight months of fiberglass work. And um, so in total, they're 19 feet long, uh, which is as long as like an F-350 Super Duty. Um, they both have Coyote V8s in them. So this is a 2013 Zimmer Mustang. That one over there is a 2011 Zimmer Mustang. Um, this is actually the last one they ever built. And then all, all of them come standard with the knockoff wheels with the white walls. Um, that one over there doesn't have it right now because they fell off at some point. Zimmer material, what is this thing? Oh, someone dropped a flashlight in there. Well, that's got a free flashlight. <laughs> um, but yeah, Bluetooth on them is nice. No screen is kind of a downside. This one still does have the Mustang wheel. Um, and to answer most people's questions, that's because it is still a Mustang. Yeah, so we have the two examples here, the silver one, which I just showed you, and the black one, which is kind of like the used and abused, daily driven. I do get asked all the time if I drive these. This one I do drive every single day. All season tires, and I gotta say it performs the best. Uh, on the road compared to like most cars I've driven and I've driven trucks SUVs all-wheel drive front-wheel drive This thing does amazing with the, the wheelbase weight um, Gold-plated Eagles all these horns are functional got the bugles up front Dixie horns hit in there. I never watched the movie until I got these cars and then I Then I watched the movie um, Thought it made sense so that I put Gatsby 1 and Gatsby 2 as the vanity plates this one just has train horns on it. They're not actually train horns, but they're pretty loud. Um, the light bars do work, so I can go off-roading. So Zimmer's been around since the 80s. Uh, they did most of their units in the 80s. They did 2,000 units in the 80s. They didn't do too many of the later year Mustang models. Um, so from this one's year, they did five. Two of them went to the Middle East for their Saudi Arabia dealership. And then this is the last one they made. So. What they did um, is they would charge 100 grand to do the six to eight months of fiberglass work, staying the frame, dropping the coyote in, and then sell them brand new with zero miles to people. So there's kind of like the, the Zimmer history breakdown of, of all the questions I've been getting. With talking all day long and, and tons of people seeing these cars for the first time, there's been a couple things, you know, at the auto show that I don't want to say have been annoying, but have been a learning thing for me. It, there's I'll back up for a second. So I kind of get like with these cars all being here, they're locked. And then you come from the regular cars, which you can get in and out of and, and open the doors and stuff. Um, after the first day, we learned that we need to lock these to keep the windows up because the car alarms keep going off because people love to touch them. Um, I will need a good car wash on these because we do get a lot of kids through here and they, they love to touch things, which is, which is fine. I get it. And sometimes the adults do. Um, so there's lots of fingerprints that weren't there before. They have to be detailed out um but really other than that like there was a few times where i was like hey i told people just like get off the car and, and not get into it or move along um two of the weird stories i had was i was standing over there and i see people are lifting the hood up which for one i was surprised that they even figured out how to do that and then two i walk over there and i hold for them because i don't want to drop them to drop it because it's all fiberglass and and, I, and they just like keep talking. I'm just like sitting there nodding, and and then I start like interjecting, like, "Oh, is this your car?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> um, and then you know, some kids they like to stand on this, which isn't a good idea because a you could either break this, break the glass if you're hanging on to it, 
or they could fall off and hurt themselves. So that was really the only problem we had. And it's kind of just the nature of the beast of being at a car show and an auto show is people, um, they come by, they check out the cars, and then they move on. Um, but my main thing with being here was to promote the show, try and get a lot of more Minnesotans to know about the Twin Cities Auto Show, which I think has definitely happened. I've had tons of people come up to me for pictures, to ask questions. They said they followed me. They, some said they came here just for me, which was super cool. My brain cells are just depleted. I had one friend come up to me that I forgot his name in the middle of the conversation, even though I've known him for like five years. Um, 